So it's a juvenile, mm -hmm. and slightly smaller than the other birds, but old enough to be feeding itself, old enough to know how to bite now. When we, um, when we band these in the nest, they're still um, I'm not sure at about... Um, Do you want Matt to come down with a handle, or should it just... Ah, uh, yeah, that would be good. Oh. Yes, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're quite big. Um, yeah, they're quite big. Yeah, and, um, so, you know, at 40 days, they can't bite. We'll do is, uh, we, you know, we want to um, monitor the whole population. So they all, the uh, whole population of carcass get banned at this stage, and we'll measure, we'll measure the bill, length and width, to give us an indicator of where it's female or male. We'll measure the wing, the tail. Ultimately, we'll weigh it. That'll be the last thing we do. Um, we'll take some feather samples for DNA and. Um, Citizen beak and feather disease, mm -hmm. because these we're looking for that could spread the carcass at any time. And then the last thing that we do is microchip. So um, most of the birds that, or all of the birds that we uh, band in the nest, get a microchip into the base of their nest. Mm -hmm. And over on the sugar water feeder, there you can see a black band that goes around the, the, where they feed on the sugar water, and that's scanning them. So when they come in and reach through that. Uh, that um, scanner, it records all the birds individually. So the only other way that we can track on who's around is there's a feeder survey in here once a month. And these feeders are manned from dawn to dusk pretty much by volunteers who record every single carcass that comes in and not, a, not just feeding, but just comes in. And of course that gives us some indication of who's around, but only the birds that come in on that day and that might be a bad day or it might there might be like we've just had two weeks of fewer cow and flower which means there's a lot fewer birds coming in during the day but they come in the evening. So the scanner gives us a, an insight into the comings and goings which are a, a lot more complete than just the feeder service. Nice. So this little bird is um, one from LLB you see. So that's that, that's um, lime lime blue is a, a, a known bird in here, seen often enough in here, but we haven't found a nest for it, is that correct? So it, it'll be a natural nest. So most of the birds are um, in nest boxes, but um, one like this has been um, growing up in a, a natural site, which is fantastic as well. I mean, ultimately that's what you want them to do. It makes our job a little harder because we have to sit around waiting for these birds to come into this sort of situation. And this was particularly easy, this one, because that bird was, uh, um, Judy just called me on the radio, or Janice did actually, and said it was there 10 minutes ago. And uh, it was still here and it was going in and out of the cage. And sometimes we have to wait you know, weeks, literally, for the bird we want. And one of the, one of the men who was sitting here said, oh, you put an awful lot of almonds in there for one bird. And the, the truth of it is that um, the bird that you want is never the one that goes in there. other birds which are equally mm. attracted to them or take them. So our almond bill is <laughs> sky high this time of year. And the almonds are really the, the treat which they find irresistible. So we don't offer the almonds um, regularly in their other food there. So it's just a treat food. And they really, they really, they all seem to, once they get the taste of the almonds, it's pretty, pretty irresistible. So, this bird came in with its parent, and its parent seems to have left it now, <laughs> and it's now an hour of me. Won't be far away though. Um, it's all a bit traumatic for the bird, of course being handled is, is bad enough without being poked and prodded and having your feathers taken. But um, despite all that, we often find that these birds will be back at the feeder several hours later. It might be back feeding here. Um, by the afternoon. What it does do is it puts a bit of a ripple through the flock though, so all of a sudden for all the other public who are going to come in after you, there's not going to be kaka here for uh, 20 minutes or an hour or so as they've cleared out. So the, but the, um, it doesn't stay as an off-limits thing for long. They get over it and, and just think it was a bad day. <laughs> So Matt, I can hear, is just approaching on the motorbike. You'll have the um, banding gear with him, and you're quite welcome to sit.
it and watch the whole process if you want. It takes a while, it'll probably be about 20 minutes while all that happens. But, um, you're welcome to take it. Power length is 140. Oh, hang on, 142. 142. <laughs> So when we take the tarsus measurement, there's a couple of different ways that can be done, but we actually measure the tarsus bone, so we go from this little notch in its elbow, rather than, some people measure it, a slightly different measurement. But so that's the left tarsus? We're measuring the bone itself, which is another indicator of sex. Indicator or sex? Sex sometimes, yeah, yeah. It's not as reliable as... Oh my! Somebody's not happy. So the band that Matt's putting on at the moment is a, um, a number band, that's unique. Mm -hmm. It's got the number and up to this moment all of our cohort boards birds from this year would all be banded orange to be, signify uh, this year's birds. But okay. we, we had so many. We've actually had to break out last year's colour. Yeah, so we've banded over one, one close to 80. Wow. So well, not will, will the bird ever be rebanded again to indicate uh, anything in the future? Or? No, no, that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. The first band that put on is um, spring steel. It's quite, quite difficult to get that band on. These other colour bands uh, are um, aluminium. And easier to see, I'm sure, from a distance. Well, I know they're smaller actually than the main band, but every, every car that gets banded with three, three bands. Which indicates. The other colours are totally random. So one indicates cohort the year that it was pledged. Okay. The We're just banding the spear. Pardon? We're just, we're just putting bands on the spear. Then we're going to take a couple of feathers. Is that it's mm, relative. Yeah, yeah. They stick together, they look after each other. bring him down to my other knee so he can go across there, okay? Can you come across? Is that going to give you a... Yep, that's good. Yeah. So how did you... Capture him? Yeah. Uh, there's a cage over there behind the feeders and, and um, I put almonds in it and he was just came, he just came down to feed on the almonds. So once um. they've got the taste for almonds... And uh, have a look at the size of this thing before you put that in there. I might want to show people just. Quite, quite large. Can you see them? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Curtain yeah. doll size. 
think that would hurt me. Yep, so now our final thing is that we weigh the bird, and we do that last because we actually sort of lose control of the bird's head at that point, because we put the bird back into a bag that was weighed already, and then weigh the bird in the bag. But getting the bird into the bag and getting your hand out of the bag Trick. with the bird already in there <laughs> is, when it, it is when the bird can have its revenge. So, um, no, no, most of it goes really smooth and we found a, a good way of doing it, which means the bag goes over the bird rather than the bird goes into the bag. And, and, then, the, um, and then it's all over. And, uh, <coughs> I remember that blue bucket we used to have chips, the wine chips. So 450 is, um, is it's just a little lighter than your chick weight because when we do these birds before they fledge, they can be up above 500 grams. So that's 450 minus 400 for that bag. So it's about 410, which is 50, 50 or 60, 70 grams lighter than a bird in the nest often. So what, when those birds are in the nest, they're all puppy bags, tucker bags. They haven't, they haven't turned it um, into muscle. Now he's a lean machine. <laughs> so we'll just put him straight back up into a tree. Hopefully, we can get the other side of the top.